Elsewhere on the racetrack last weekend, we had the Arlington Million cards Saturday at Colonial Downs. It was delayed, or Sunday, actually. It was delayed by weather, and it was delayed later in the day, I think, by some more weather. Uh, but they were able to get all the races off. Nation's Pride won the Arlington Million. Uh, a little disappointing that Integration ran second. But he's the kind of horse that, like, when, he's, when he runs second in a grade one, he gets 100 buyer. It's a little disappointing. That's how good he is. Yeah, exactly. So I just I, I would like to see him get a grade one eventually. And I think there is one with his name on it. So that that was a good race. Moira won the Beverly D. To me, I think she is the the top of the Philly Mayor Turf division right now. I think it's it's kind of crying out for a leader. And I think she's that one for Kevin Attard. Uh, Trickery won the Secretariat with a 96 buyer. So at least going a mile. Actually, he won the mile and a quarter Belmont Derby too. You know, I not not to slight Carson's run, but to me, that horse is the leader in the three year old turf division. This was his third straight graded stake win, so a very nice card. And I used to think like they should call these races something else since they're not Arlington anymore. But I flipped on that. I think there needs to be a preservation of the history of Arlington and the Arlington Million Card, even if the track itself isn't there. Those are really, really important races. I think the most important non-Breeders' Cup turf race in America, in American racing history, is the Arlington Million. And I'm glad that we're keeping up uh, the tradition, at least even if it's at a different track. Uh, Looking forward to this weekend, we've got the Alabama card coming up on Saturday at Saratoga. We're little over a week away from the Traverse Stakes. The Alabama got an eight-horse field. No superstars without Torpedo Anna in there, but it's competitive. It's a good betting race. A race before that is the Lake Placid, which is absolutely loaded. West Point has a very, very interesting runner in there. If you're looking for a tip, first-time U.S. horse named Loray. We bought privately from France. Christophe Clement got her, and she... Christoph bought a horse that won a stake at Longchamp in June and now is in a graded stake two months later at Saratoga. That's typically not his MO. When you get those horses from overseas, they need to go through quarantine. They need to get used to their new surroundings, their new racetracks. Usually you give them several months to ramp up before you put them in a spot. It should tell you a lot that she's already in on Saturday for the Clements. So I think that she's pretty live, but it's a really nice field. She feels pretty. A couple of really interesting Euros in there. Uh, John, you looked at the Alabama. Anything else from this weekend that sticks out to you? Well, in the Alabama, you, you mentioned there's there's eight horses and there are eight fillies in there. Um, listen to the sire power, Joe. Gunrunner, Gunrunner, Union Rags, Arrogate, Constitution, Justify, Candy Ride, Arrogate. I mean, Arguably seven out of the eight are, you know, the top stallions of, of the past couple of years. Um, Arrogate, again, his, he's, he's only had three crops, two and a half crops, really, you know, for in, in, in today's day and age. Um, and he's got two horses in, in this grade one at Saratoga. So um, his legacy will continue on. Um, I echo your sentiments about the turf racing um, over at Colonial. I think the reason why they were they were delayed on uh, ultimately on that day had more to do with the signal issues that they were getting right, 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 um, right, more right. so than, than the weather, but it was weather on, on all the other times. And, and uh, um, you know, we ran a horse in the last race, um, horsepower ran second in the allowance race, the 12th race. And it was literally in the dark. It was like, uh, you know, back to days of the Meadowlands when we used to try to get races in the 11th, the 10th race right before midnight. Um, so it was, uh, it, it was really cool, on, on, you know, to, to see night racing. I think everyone in the parking lot had to turn their headlights on to make sure that uh, that everyone could be seen properly. Um, Moira, you know, $3 million purchase at the at the uh, Night of the Stars, um, November of 23. And then they decided to bring the horse back to race. Um, you know, so again, another filly that, uh, you know, the, the, the powers that be, the owners did not have to run the horse again. She had done everything possible um, to pad her resume. And then, oh, by the way, this year they brought her back and she ran second in the grade one Diana um, and then just won uh, over her nemesis, Fev Rover, who I thought for a little while there, Fev was going to get the, the, the winning nod, just just ran out of gas at the at the very end. Um, and, you know, to stay with Colonial, Joe, we talk about, you know, racetracks that are that are floundering or having problems or anything like that. Colonial Downs had the governor of Virginia um, at the races and the governor announced that they are increasing the number of dates, race dates, um, going forward, at least in 2025, and that the Virginia Derby is being moved from the turf to the dirt um, and is being added to uh, the Kentucky Derby points system. So not only are they moving it, but they they got a they got a like a 
you know, a serious leg up by of importance. Um, they are moving that race to the springtime. I know you're, you have a curious look on your face. They're moving. Yeah, I was like, isn't that race for three year olds in September? Yeah, it's going to be in the springtime. They haven't announced if it's going to be in March or April yet, but it is a mm. points race, um, and they will be running at Colonial Downs next spring and summer. Um, so get your calendars and 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 uh, travel uh, arrangements taken care of now, um, because they're one of the few racetracks in the country that's adding dates. I think like them and Kentucky Downs off the top of my head are, are two of the ones that have been looking to add dates um, year in and year out. And their product there is is just outstanding. The turf course, we've had horses there um, all summer long and, and the turf course is pristine. Um, they do a really nice job and the purses are outstanding um, compared to a lot of the other racetracks um, outside of you know the major metropolitan areas like New York and and, and California. Um, so kudos to them. Um, and other big racing weekend, uh, Joe, the Woodbine, up at Woodbine up in Canada, our neighbors to the north um, are going to offer the King's Plate. And there's half a dozen stake races that are going on, you know, this uh, Saturday, the 17th, um, up at uh, Woodbine. <laughs> 